Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about bottom navigation view, which is a bottom bar that is used to navigate between different fragments. And it should be used when you have at least three fragments. And if you don't know what fragments are, then make sure to watch my previous video about that, because you need to know what that is to follow through this video. Because bottom navigation view does not belong to the Android standard library, we need to add its dependency. It is included in the Google Material Design Library, such as many other cool views. So let's actually include that dependency. Let's go to our build.gradle module app file, double click that, scroll down to our dependencies here. And inside of that block, you want to paste this dependency. And I will also include that in this video's description. So you can just copy paste it. After that, make sure to click on sync now in the top right corner. After that, click on Sync now in the top right corner and Gradle will sync your project. Next, we need to create a menu that describes the different tabs in our bottom navigation view. So, if you have watched my video about toolbar menus, then we have to create such a menu now. To do that, let's go to our RS folder, right click New Android Resource Directory, and Select the resource type here, this drop down menu, and click on menu. And then click OK afterwards. This will create a new menu folder in our resource folder. And now we can right click on our menu folder, create a new menu resource file. And I will call it um, bottom nav menu. Then click OK. Android Studio will create that menu file and open it. Then we can go into that text tab of that menu file. And in that menu tag, we can add our menu items that belong to our bottom navigation view. And because I also want to include icons in our menu items, let's create those three icons first. Let's go to Drawable, right click, New Image Asset. Then this dialog will open. First, I want to create an icon for our home fragment. So I will call it IC Home. Then click on the clip art and search for home. This is the icon I want to use here. Click OK. I will choose black as the color. Click Next and Finish. Then let's create our other two icons. So Right click on Drawable, New Image Asset. This one is IC Messages. Click on the clip art and search for Message. Then click on Next and Finish. And finally, for the last icon, right click on Drawable, New Image Asset. This one is IC Profile. Click on the clip art and search for person, I think. Yeah, this one I want to choose here. Click OK. Click Next and Finish. There we go. So now we've added our three icons to our project and now we can actually create our menu with those. Let's open a new tag here and write item. Let's give it an ID of MI Home for our home menu item. So the first one, um, I will give it a title of home and I will set the icon to I see home and close that tag off. Then let's copy that whole tag and paste it two times below. I will change this ID to MI messages, change the title to messages and change the icon to IC messages. This one is MI profile. The title is profile and the icon is IC profile. And that's it for our menu. Now we can go into our activity main.xml file and actually create our activity layout where we want to add that bottom navigation view. First, let's create a frame layout here. I will set the width to match parent and the height to 0 dp. And I will give it an ID of FL 
fragment because this will be the frame layout that holds our current fragment. And whenever we click on those bottom navigation items, then we want to switch the current fragment, which is inside of that frame layout. And below that, we want to create our bottom navigation view, this one here. And you can see this belongs to com.google Android material. That is the Google material design library, which is a very popular library for a lot of different cool views you can use. So you can just try around with it. If you just type material here, then you can see all those views that are included in that material design library. But I will use the bottom navigation view here. So press enter here. Layout width is match parent and layout height is 75 dp. And what we need to do here in XML for our bottom navigation view is to add our menu that we just created. We do that by writing menu and attaching our bottom nav menu here. Then we can close that tag off and jump into, into our design tab to set the constraints for our two views here. So here's our bottom navigation view. We can constrain it to the bottom and center it horizontally in parent. And I will take our FL fragment here, constrain the bottom to the top of our bottom navigation view and the top to our parent top. And I will also constrain it horizontally in parent. And actually I want to remove that padding that I added to our root layout because in this case, I don't want to have that little white space here for that bottom navigation view that looks really ugly. So let's go to that text tab and remove that padding here. If you didn't add it, then don't worry about it. If we run that app now, then you maybe have the same issue as I have. So here's our bottom navigation um, view and we can switch between the different tabs, but the background is in that ugly black and I don't actually know why it is black, but I know how to solve that problem. So to solve it, we need to go into our values folder in our rest folder and double click on styles.xml because we are currently using that standard style for our app. So that standard theme, but we are using a material design view in our, um, layout and because of that we should use um, a material design theme too. So you can see we have that parent theme.appcompat.light.dark action bar and we have the same theme as a material design theme. So let's remove that and write material components and dark action bar. And you want to use this one theme.materialcomponents.light.darkactionbar. And if we now run our app again, then you can see that now looks much better and we can choose between those three options that we defined in our menu. But currently, of course, we didn't define our fragments to actually change the fragments when we click on those three icons below here. And let's actually create three very basic fragment layouts we can just copy our activity main.xml here and paste it. I will name it fragment first. Then remove the content of, the, of, of that constraint layout and replace it with a single text view. Set the width to wrap content and the height to. Give it an ID of TV um, first fragment and set the text of that text view to first fragment and close that tag off. Then we can go into our design tab and set the constraints horizontally in parent and vertically in parent. And actually let's increase the text size a little bit. So let's write text size is equal to 30 SP. Then we can take our fragment first XML, copy it and paste it. This one is fragment second. Change the ID to TV second fragment. The text to second fragment and paste it one time more. 
fragment third tv third fragment and third fragment and now let's go into our app package and create three classes for our just created fragment layout files so right click new kotlin file or class select class here and this one is first fragment and that class inherits from fragment and in the constructor of fragment we need to pass the id of the corresponding layout file first we need to press alt plus enter to import fragment and as i said here we need to pass r.layout.fragment first then we can take that first fragment class, copy it and paste it again, call it second fragment and replace that layout with fragment second. And paste it one more time for the third fragment and replace the layout with fragment third. Then we can go into our main activity.kt file and here I want to create a function that just replaces our current fragment with a new one. So let's write private fun set current fragment. And as a parameter, we pass a fragment that we want to set as the new current fragment. And that is equal to support fragment manager dot begin transaction dot apply. And here we want to call replace. And we want to replace the new fragment into our container, which is um, the FL fragment container, our frame layout. So r.id.fl fragment. And as a fragment, we pass the fragment that we passed here as a parameter. And afterwards, we want to call commit to actually apply those changes. Then inside of our onCreate function, we can create an instance of each of our fragments. So val first fragment is equal to first fragment val second fragment is equal to second fragment and finally val third fragment is equal to third fragment now we want to set the initial fragment that shows up when we open the app which is just first fragment so let's call set current fragment with first fragment and now we want to actually um, respond to clicks on our different menu items and switch to the corresponding fragment. To do that, let's write bottom navigation view and we need to add an on navigation item selected listener. So let's write set on navigation item selected listener, this one, not on navigation item reselected listener. We want to choose this one. And here we can use a when expression because our it here is the current menu item we clicked on and we can refer to the ID of that menu item we clicked on with it dot item ID. And depending on which item ID that is, we can respond to that click differently. If we clicked on r.id.mi home, so on our home menu item, in that case, we want to set the current fragment to first fragment. If we clicked on MI messages, then we want to set the current fragment to second fragment. And if we clicked on MI profile, then we want to set the current fragment to third fragment. And because this is a Lambda function that expects return value from us, which is a Boolean in this case that describes whether we handled that click or not. And in this case, we handled that click, of course, we can just return true at the end. So just write true here. We don't write return true here in a, in a Lambda function. Instead, just write true. It will always return the last line of that function. And if we now run that app, you can see our first fragment shows up initially. And if we click on messages, for example, then our second fragment is shown. 
if we click on profile, then it switches to the third fragment and so on. So that is a really cool way of navigation. And as a little bonus, I want to show you how to actually display little badge symbols here. So for example, if we click on messages that we have a little number up here at the message symbol that tells us how many new messages we have. And that is actually not very hard to do. Let's jump into that on create function again. And to do that, we need to write bottom navigation view dot get or create badge. A badge is just this number that appears at the top right corner of a menu item. And here we need to specify the ID of the menu item for which we want to create that badge, which is just r.id.mimessages. Afterwards call apply. And inside of that apply block, we can just set the number. So that the number of that badge to 10, for example. In a real app, you would of course set that number dynamically to the number that represents the real new message count. But in this example, I'll just set it to 10. And afterwards, we need to call is visible is equal to true to actually show that badge. If we now run our app again, then you can see at our message symbol, there is a little 10 in the top right corner that displays how many new messages we have. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If so, please leave a like and comment below. Also, if there is anything I can improve on, then please tell me that. That would be really helpful for me. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.